So now in this video we're going to look at a DC motor. This is a 3 volt DC motor right there. You can see we got the uh, two terminals for powering it. You just apply a direct current voltage to it. Positive and negative. Straightforward. I have this little flower looking fan that I'm going to attach to it. And this is uh, off balance or something a little bit. So we can't go full speed. We're not going to go to the full 3 volts. Maybe we will just to watch how badly things run but in case we just connect the negative power supply to one or the other depending on the direction we want it to go we can attach whichever one we want and now I'll turn the power on power could have been on while I was attaching them but it would turn on I'd have to get my fingers clear these are soft though they don't hurt so in any case now you can see about how much current we got it's a 3 volt motor as I said before but with the fan you're going to see somewhere about 1.5. There's that grinding and stuff. So I think it's because the fan is off balance or whatever. But as you could see, we uh, had some problems going above a 3 volt. So that is counterclockwise right there going that way just in case it's a little hard to tell while watching the video. And now we're just going to swap which side positive and negative are right there and uh, turn the power. Now it's going to go clockwise as you can see there and actually it, that uh, metal shaft comes all the way to the bottom. I can slow it down with my finger a bit but there you can see it going clockwise right there. So we saw it can go the two different directions. We are pretty much done with that. Now we're going to look at uh, how it sounds going to 3 volts without the fan. You'll notice that it sounds uh, much better and it's using less current too so that's another interesting thing that's why it's a good idea to test out your electronic components before you start applying them to circuits thinking that uh, you'll know how they'll work right away so what I'm going to do is connect this to the breadboard now I have some alligator clips that I made all I did was uh, I took regular breadboard jumpers that's the way it looks on uh, both ends there got these alligator clips and I slid uh, the plastic back and uh, you can just open the jaws it'll slide off pretty easy and uh, I pinched the end of the alligator clip directly I just used pliers to the metal here pretty straightforward and then tightened it down uh, pretty tight and uh, makes pretty good connection right there even though it's a simple connection and we got a blue one that I'm going to put to the negative supply so a lot of times when I have components or something that'd be nice to have alligator clips to them but I want to power them with the breadboard I use this setup right here pretty straightforward and uh, so I thought I would show that that works uh, really nicely so there we go we are gonna have some more resistance so it's probably going slower it may use a little uh, less current because uh, there's some resistance there this is very low resistance it is a resistive component the amount of current going through it depends uh, mostly on the voltage across it but as we saw there's other conditions too the magnetic fields and stuff will make it conduct better or less depending on the situation so that's why it's a good idea to test this out to see how much you're going to need now I have current set to 2 amps right there sometimes when you ask for a burst of current it thinks there's a short circuit so if you don't set the current up high enough sometimes that happens with this power supply so something to be aware of if you have short circuit protection um, otherwise if it didn't uh, cut power when it needed a burst of uh, current I wouldn't set that so high so that's it for this video pretty straightforward hope you enjoy make sure you check out one of the other videos I post to the screen and check out the links down below they all help out a lot I'll see you in the next video